Hello everyone, welcome to the series of What If Deku Had Chakra. Be sure to like, share, and check out the author Belinsky Simp as they have some really good Naruto fanfics. The link will be in the description down below. And with that let's begin. After Izuku Yaga's parents learned of his useless quirk, they started slowly pushing him away and neglecting him while focusing on their daughter and her fascinating quirk. His sister Izumi and best friend Katsuki Bakugo which he referred to as Kachin bullied and tormented him his entire life because of his lack of a useless quirk. What none of those people knew was that Izuku was the reincarnation of the son of Boruto Yuzumaki and Sarada Uchiha making the last wielder of Chakra. So when the kid meets this old powers users how will he use it? Izuku Yagi, Atsutsuki. Chapter 1, A Quirkless Hero. Third Person POV. A lot of people have dreamt of having heroes as parents. It's a dream that one would do anything for. What could possibly be better than being the child of a hero? A person who saves people? One might wonder. Yet in reality, a lot of examples show that having hero parents is more of a curse than a blessing. One of those who were cursed by heroic parents was Izuku Yagi, the son of All Might, the number one hero of Japan and the symbol of peace in the world. It was back when the kid was four years old. He, with his twin sister and parents, had gone to a doctor to check what kind of quirks the twins had. The parents were thrilled to hear that their daughter had a telekinetic quirk that had the potential to become even more powerful and useful than her mother's similar quirk. They were so excited to find out their other kid's quirk but they were let down when the doctor said that he had no idea what the kid's quirk was. The parents asked how that was possible and the doctor only answered by saying that there is a quirk inside the kid's body but it wasn't usable and he had no idea how it functioned. Hearing that the two heroes, who had their identities a secret, felt a bit disappointed that their kid had a useless quirk, they asked the doctor to write him down as quirkless so that he doesn't keep his dream of becoming a hero while not having a quirk to aid him so he doesn't get hurt. The family left the doctor's office with the parents complimenting their daughter's quirk while Tashinori, the father of the family, had his hand on Izuku's head without saying a word. They entered the car and Izuku was obviously on the verge of tears after finding out about his lack of unique power and quirk. His sister looked at him with a hint of disgust and disappointment in her eyes starting to feel like her twin has turned useless now that he has no usable quirk. They went to their home and each kid went to their own room. Tashinori followed his daughter to her room and started talking to her about heroes and gave her as much confidence and confidence as she needed so she wouldn't give up on her dream. Izuku on the other hand was watching a video about all his favorite heroes altogether. His mother suddenly entered the room only to see her kid sobbing. And hey mom, do you think I, I could be, be a hero T2? He stuttered while looking at his mother, and Ko couldn't do anything but hug her four-year-old son with some tears in her eyes. I'm sorry Izuku, I'm really sorry she said, but dot 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 that's not what I wanted to hear the kid thought to himself. That night, Tashinori and Nko's friends whom Izuku and Izumi had seen as their uncles and aunts visited their home. Those friends were none other than the heroes that were aware of their secret identities which aren't a lot. In their home were the heroes Midnight, Eraserhead, Present Mike, Nezu and Gran Torino. All those heroes were aware of Tashinori and Inko's identities. The heroes celebrated the entire night with little Izumi but Izuku never joined them and stayed in his room. When noticing that his favorite baby nephew wasn't in the room, Eraser Head also known as Shota Aizawa went to his room to check up on him. He entered the room and looked around seeing all the figurines and posters of heroes all around the kid's room and his eyes fell on a picture that the kid had beside his bed of Izuku with his entire family aunt and uncles. He smiled then turned around to look at his nephew noticing him playing with his Endeavor figure to fight the fake villains he had scattered in the ground. Endeavor huh? He's definitely strong enough to beat those villains isn't he said Shota catching the attention of his nephew. Uncle S-H-O-T-A shouted Izuku as he jumped at his uncle. Shota smiled a little at his nephew then put him down and sat next to him. Isn't Endeavor so cool and amazing? Asked Izuku. Yeah he's the best said Aizawa. I hate that bitch he thought to himself. Aizawa then sat down with his nephew watching him talking about all his favorite heroes and his future dream of becoming a hero himself. You are going to become a great hero Zuku, even without a quirk. Chapter 2, The Life of the Quirkless, Third Person POV The day after the family learned of their son's lack of a quirk, they took him and his sister to the playground so they could spend their day with their childhood friend Katsuki Bakugo who they refer to as Kachin. Izumi and Bakugo were playing on the swings while Izuku was sitting in the sandbox thinking about what he and his uncle talked about the day before. When Izuku told Aizawa about feeling sad for not being able to become a hero for his lack of power, his uncle gave him a long speech about how he didn't need any unique power to become a hero and that he could achieve that with only hard work. Back to the playground. Izumi informed Bakugo about how her brother had no functional quirk and told him how mad she was that he was still trying to become a hero. She didn't care what happened to her brother but what she was angry about was the boy trying to become a hero without a quirk while she was the one with a strong ability and the only one between the two that deserved to be a hero. 
Bakugo seemed to agree with the girl. He just like her. Had a strong quirk so his other childhood friend not having a useful quirk made him useless in his eyes. The two came up with a plan to bully the kid until he gives up as a way to put him in his place. The bullying continued for many years with the two followed by the entire school bullying Izuku yet never once did they hear him saying that he was going to give up on his dream of becoming a hero. The two alongside their puny psychics abused and hurt the kid non-stop, some hurting him even more than his sister and friend in various inhuman ways. Izuku's aunts and uncles also stopped visiting to make sure that they don't attract any of their enemies to the kids, something that Tashinori and Inko asked them for. That didn't stop them from sending their nephew and niece some letters and gifts from time to time. On Izuku's fifth birthday Aizawa sent him a binding cloth, capture weapon similar to his after the kid complimented it. With the weapon there was a letter where Aizawa told him that he's hoping that one day he'll teach him and aid him in becoming a great hero. Izuku's parents slowly started distancing him away from them and started neglecting him. Tashinori did that the moment he learned about the kid's lack of a quirk while Inko started doing that months later. The kid was living between Negelkshin in his house and bullying in his school, and it seemed that no one around him was supportive of his dream. A part of him wanted to give up but what stopped him from giving up was his uncle Shota. His life wasn't the best in any way shape or form. When the kid was just 10 years his parents completely stopped caring for the kid even forgetting to give him any money or provide him with food which led to the kid starting to work and able to get money. He had some small jobs whether babysitting or helping and cleaning other people's houses to get the money he needs to survive. That also seemed to help in the kid's growth as his body was becoming more buff every day with how much he worked. Even with all that work and stress the kid didn't fall behind in his school getting the highest marks even if it meant his sister and childhood friend both beating him up for it. He noticed that all the gifts that his uncles and aunt used to send him were given only to Izumi which saddened him thinking that his loved uncles and aunt also had forgotten about him. He never gave up though. He was going to fight the entire world if it meant that he was going to achieve his dream of becoming a hero that everyone looked up to. He continued suffering until he was 15 when he and the duo were about to graduate middle school. His teacher told the entire class about him applying to UA the most known hero school, and the hardest for anyone to be accepted to. When they heard that, Izumi and Bakugo ended up beating the kid for hours straight to teach him a lesson, but what truly broke him was both of them telling him to take a swan dive from the roof of a building and pray to be born with a better quirk in his next life. Ignoring them the kid left the school and started waking to his home thinking about what his sister and friend said. On his way the kid was attacked by a villain who suffocated him for many minutes only to end up saved by his father All Might whom he really didn't even know was his father. After saving him Izuku followed the hero going as far as jumping on him while he jumped off away from the scene. After landing on a roof, All Might had a chat with the kid about hero work but when the kid asked him if he was able to become a hero without a quirk, all Might rejected his child telling him that becoming a hero without a quirk will end up taking the kid's life away. He then left the roof with the monsters captured and contained in a bottle to give him to the police station. Izuku was left behind on the rooftop completely shattered. Chapter 3 The Life of the Past Third Person POV Izuku was left behind on the rooftop completely shattered and saddened with what the number one hero had told him. He fell to his knees as his head repeated everything that he's been told since childhood. He felt like he was dying as he looked at the cliff of the roof. His brain then stopped at what his sister and friend had told him a few hours ago and tears started forming in his eyes but he held it back. He went to the cliff and looked down but he couldn't jump. He didn't want to jump that would just prove Izumi and Bakugo right about him being useless and pathetic. He sighed and sat down at the cliff and started drawing another suit. Since childhood he loved drawing suits for pro heroes just as much as he loved taking notes about them. He was drawing a new suit for the newly graduated hero Hawks thinking that the hero had no way of protecting himself with his jacket and shirt. After finishing his drawing Izuku sighed and thought to himself why do I even do this? It's not like Mr. Hawks will see it. He then left the rooftop and walked back to his house. He entered only to find the house completely empty. He shrugged it off knowing that his parents probably took their little princess shopping for like the third time that week. Entering his room Izuku looked around at the nearly empty room. He had only a few figurines of his uncles and aunt. None of the books he had when he was younger were there in fact not even the bookshelf. Same goes with his laptop and posters which he had to sell to get more money to get food when there was nothing home. He laid on his bed that no longer had his favorite All Might bed cover instead a plain white one that he had in his closet which now also contains only a few shirts and pants that still fit him. It's not that he gained weight. The kid looked like a literal skeleton. It's just that he grew a little and became taller and his parents didn't care enough to take him shopping. Not having anything to do he went to sleep which didn't take long as he fell asleep once his head touched the pillow. It was barely a few seconds later when he opened his eyes only to find himself in a white room which seemed to be empty until he heard two voices calling him. Your funnily here shouted what seemed to be a young adult. Izuku looked in that direction only to find a guy with a well-built frame and short height. He had spiky, 
blonde hair, blue eyes and two whisker markings on each of his cheeks. He was wearing a belt with short black pants, regular sandals, and a cloak. He was also wearing a forehead protector with two intersecting slashes on it. The guy seemed pretty nice and optimistic. Next to him stood a guy that looked the exact opposite of the first. The other guy had grey eyes and bushy black hair, the sides of which are shaven and blonde in color. He also had a tattoo of the Roman numeral IX under his left eye, a pair of piercings on his right eyebrow, and stud earrings. He was wearing a violet infinity scarf and belt, white overalls with his chest exposed, and a black vest trench coat. About time, couldn't you have come here like a few years ago? Said the emo looking guy. Excuse me, I don't even know where I am dot 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 also who are you guys? Answered Izuku looking around trying to find somewhere to leave the room he was in. Well someone has an attitude. Anyways hi I'm Baruto Yuzumaki. This is my brother Kawaki Yuzumaki said the blonde guy while pointing on his brother when he mentioned the latter's identity. The other guy only rolled his eyes and Izuku immediately thought about Bakugo. Hey, don't compare me to that explosive bitch spat out the guy recently identified as Kawaki. Wait what? Did you read my mind or something? Is that your quirk muttered the younger kid. No we're just in your mind right now so we can easily hear your thoughts said the gold-haired kid. Izuku looked at him with confusion and the two men sat down with him following suit. The golden-haired then started talking. Long ago, before this world saw what you guys refer to as quirks, all the people around the globe used what we refer to as chakra. Chakra is basically the life force that we have within our physical body and our spiritual one. Back in my day we were shinobi, ninja. Some evil alien gods were trying to steal the chakra from our planet and also wanted to take revenge because of one of their members called Kaguya Atsutsuki betrayed another one Ishiki Atsutsuki who was a higher member of their clan. Ishiki took Kawaki here as a vessel while another Atsutsuki took me as their vessel Mama Shiki Atsutsuki. Ishiki managed to completely take control of Kawaki's body and he used it to his advantage to murder our father Naruto Yuzumaki and his best friend Sasukacha. After that I fought Kawaki for days straight to defeat him and end Ishiki. After Kawaki got a little control over his senses we went towards Ishiki's old hiding place and came up with a plan. We together used the powers of the Ten Tails which is a beast that's made out of Chakra to cast a Jutsu that allowed us to wipe away everyone's memory on earth making them forget about Chakra. We then used that beast's power with the God Tree, which is a tree that the Atsutsuki's plant on planets to suck that planet's Chakra and make a Chakra fruit that would provide the Atsutsuki that eats it with great nearly endless power, to suck away all the Chakra that was on our planet and around it so that it'll no longer be used by the evil. But doing that required a lot so as a way of payment we both sacrificed our lives. Since then, our souls alongside all the chakra were stick in that fruit and now here we are. Izuku was utterly astonished wanting to ask a lot about that past but there was one thing that was confusing him more than anything. But why am I here? How are you able to talk to me? And why do you even want to talk to me out of all people? Asked Izuku. One more thing. Before we died me and my girlfriend Sarada Uchiha Sasuke's daughter had a son that we didn't take his chakra so he could continue taking care of the world in secret. We watched over him and saw his entire life until he passed away answered Baruto. Izuku felt sad for the guy. Seeing his son die wouldn't be the easy but he still didn't understand why he stood in front of those two dead shinobi. I'm sorry for that by I still don't get what does this all have to do with me. Kawaki and Baruto looked at each other and Izuku saw a smirk appearing on both their faces. Because you, Izuku Yagi are Baruto-san's reincarnation. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a discord down below. Be sure to aim for the stars, drink plenty of water, and for us to cause chaos. With that take care until next we see each other again.